You might have seen me in the uh, next web talk about these new people discovery apps that you put on your iPhone or your Android phone, and they help you find people near you that are using the app as well. And we're going to see an, yet another one called Kismet, which is, has some uh, advantages the others don't. Who are you? I'm Michelle Norgan. I'm the co-founder of Kismet and chief product officer. And previously, I was a product manager and employee number one at a social startup. And I built and designed their web and mobile products. And who are you? I'm Kevin Stevens, co-founder and CEO of Kismet. Uh, prior to Kismet, I was uh, uh, at Boxy. And before that, I spent about five years at Google and YouTube playing a role between product and engineering. Before that, I was a couple years at Apple. and. Uh, um, a couple other companies in Silicon Valley as well. This people discovery space is really white hot right now. I, yeah. I, I usually love going into South by Southwest with a fight between two companies, but I think there's, a, I don't know, five, well, first of all, there's uh, the old companies like uh, Banjo and uh, Sonar, and now there's uh, Highlight and Glancy that are newer, that are force you to use this app, and I've covered them, we've had them on my show, and, and now Kismet. So there's five companies going at it yeah. <laughs> in this new people discovery space. Uh, tell me a little bit, lay out the space for me and tell me what maybe differentiates you. There's two ways of approaching it. You know, you have, you can either check in to say where you are and to find, you know, other people to meet, or you can sort of have an app running all the time in the background and it sends you a push notification to introduce you to new people. Those are at two very different ends of what you referred to previously as the freaky line. Um, and we believe that it's very important to give the user total control of that line. Um, plus, there's a lot of information you get from an actual check-in, from actually saying where you are, what event you're at, what place you're at, which is another one of Kismet's features. We don't just focus on introducing people to each other directly. We focus on one of the most comfortable situations um, to meeting somebody else, which is an ad hoc event. Let's go out for drinks, or let's go to the, the Mashable party, or let's go to, you know, uh, let's go to lunch, something like that, or let's watch a panel. Those are situations where we al always encounter each other, you know, new people every day. Um, we're bringing that into an app and making it much simpler to, uh, to meet new people that way. What, what is this space? What, what does it do for you, and why do we need it? Because I'm sure there's a lot of people going, what? <laughs> <laughs> we're basically solving the simple problem of meeting new people. Um, meeting new people is hard um, when you're, you know, I spend a lot of time uh, traveling. It's really hard to be in a new city and, and you know, eat dinner alone and things like that. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Michelle moved to the area, you know, a couple years ago and realized, you know, well, this is a lot harder to meet people <laughs> when you're not in, you know, in college or, or you know, have exactly. a huge company to, to find, you know, other employees to, to hang out with. Mm -hmm. So the problem basically is meeting new people. Um, and finding people that are relevant to you and nearby and meeting them in the real world. Yeah. So tell me what this app does and, and sure. why you think it's going to be important in two or three years for the mainstream audience. Well, we've been actually planning from day one when we started working on this about a year ago, trying to, as you say, like deal with that freaky factor. It's, it's a very different line for people. I think you'll find for the majority of women, it's on you know one end of the spectrum they don't, they want to keep for example where they live private but for someone perhaps like yourself and many men you know they they don't mind sharing where they are all the time so we actually give users complete control over that factor it's one of the reasons we incorporate both check-ins and sort of the passive location you know turn the app on and it runs in the background we want to let the user set what they're comfortable with so if you want to turn the app on it'll track where you are you can you know passively share your location as as you move around and just go about your day or you can turn that off and you can just check in at the locations you're comfortable. And one of the things we built in for, you know, for our female audience and for those that are uncomfortable and something that I personally love is we actually build a sort of a geofence around your house. So when you go home, the app kind of calculates, it figures out where you live and we automatically hide you when you're there. You go home, it's your private kingdom. You don't have to, to share where you are. You don't have to remember to you know, turn off the app when you go there, we do that for you. Yeah. Last night at Stanford, I was showing some of these apps around to an audience there of business students, which was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one, of the, one of the girls there said she had been stalked by a guy in the mm -hmm. past, and she was very concerned that this could, kind of app could be used for stalking. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to block people and make you invisible to just one or two other people that maybe are, are freaking you out? Yeah, we're, we're looking into, you know, what's the right messaging? Is, is block the right feature? Is, you know, just turning 
as you, just controlling more strictly where you where you show your location. We're looking into those things, and that's something definitely that I, as a female co-founder, really want to pay attention to because um, you know talking to a lot of users and a lot of female users, that's a big concern. That's you know the number one thing in in social discovery and any kind of location-based app is I want to make sure that I'm safe when I'm using this app. Yeah. Well, I, I certainly love using these apps because you walk around San Francisco and you see, oh, there's a venture capitalist yeah. around <laughs> the corner, and, and there's a CEO, or there's some cool developer, and you can just text them. And I assume your app does those basics, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Of course. Yeah, so you can, um, you can basically look around, see who's, who's nearby, who's near you. You can send them a message, uh, you know, start a chat with them. Um, you can basically right away send them an invitation to meet. You can invite people to, uh, to a, an event, which is basically a meeting with, with multiple people. Further, once you're going to an event, other people can invite you to, can, or other people that are going to that event can invite their friends as well, which, which again is one of the main ways we meet new people all the time. So we pretty much, you know, we, we have all those, um, all those features built into the app that let you communicate with people and, and talk to people, but mainly we want people meeting in person. You know, that's, that's the ultimate payoff in this space is, you know, um, we don't want to be an online, you know, chat app. We want we want to move people from the, the online chat world and, and move them into meeting in person and talking to each other in person. But you do have the messaging capability. So yep. if you see me walking nearby you, you can say, mm -hmm. hey, Scoble, what's up? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, does it hook into Facebook? Because a lot of the other apps force you to be on Facebook and right. then they hook into Facebook to look at who your friends are, your real life, your Facebook friends. Which aren't necessarily your real life, friends, <laughs> and uh, who your uh, who your likes are. So they yeah. pull data. Is that what, how this works? Sort of. So we, we do have people sign in with Facebook, and we're working obviously on other other ways to make people uh, log in as well, um, because not everybody has a Facebook account, and we want to support you know LinkedIn, which is a great professional use case as well. Um, but we use the data that we get from that to not only show your mutual friends but to calculate what we call the Kevin Bacon graph, which is the distance between point A and point B to anybody. You have 2,200 friends on Facebook, you're a pretty connected guy, it's pretty hard for you to meet somebody and not have a mutual friend in San Francisco. Um, not everybody has that. A lot, of people, you know, a lot of people keep their Facebook circle intentionally small, but having the data about how they know someone, how they're connected, you know, oh, you're friends with my best friend's brother, that's very valuable data to them and very valuable information. Um, so we are able to calculate that through Facebook. We don't. Um, we do uh, look at a person's likes, but that's not nearly as important as places where people spend their time. Yeah. We think that actually says a lot more about you than what you've liked on Facebook. We think, um, you know, if you're always hanging out at AT&T Park in the Irish pub, that's a very different profile than somebody who's always at, you know, the art museum or um, or the you know the public library and so on. Oh, that's interesting. So if I go to barbecue three times a week, you're going to be able to know that I'm a barbecue lover and maybe even give me a badge, sort of like food spotting does, right? Well, may maybe not so much a, a badge, but maybe at least connect you to other, you know, at least surface the fact that you have barbecue in common with somebody else. Um, in fact, that's one of the features of the app is that you can see shared locations that if you're always going to... You know, I keep coming back to South by Southwest examples. If you're if you're going to Salt Lake, you know, three or four times while you're down there, you know, you'll find other users that that, that are as well. Mm -hmm. how, how else are you using the app, and what are the use cases that you're seeing happen, and what do you think will happen at South by Southwest next week? Um, I think the the event the events feature is going to be one of the things that that people are really going to um, kind of latch on to because uh, South by Southwest is a lot of parties. People go to you know drinks and in the evening and that sort of thing, and being able to invite your friends to come with you and to basically you know bring their network their extended network to to meet people who are two and three you know degrees out from you is going to be I think a really key thing that's networking happens like that all the time and this app is perfect for making that actually you know really seamless and and easy to do and that, that's really important for a, uh, a place like South by Southwest where you have 40,000 people in I don't know, like ten block yeah, area, a few right? blocks, yeah. And yeah. like the Hilton will have several events on different floors. Mm -hmm. Well, GPS can't really show that, right? Mm -hmm. the, exactly. you, the, these things are not accurate enough to show right. floors or show even parts of a room or something like that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So saying where, and you, you alluded to this earlier, you know, saying saying where you're spending your time, why you're at that particular event, whether it's at the Mashable party or or a hackathon or just at the at the hotel bar in the you know in the in the Hilton or something, you know, those are all those are all very different places and they're going to have um, different, you know, different people there and, and knowing 
that somebody is a half mile away or, or a tenth of a mile away is, you know, that's important, but knowing exactly why they're somewhere um, is also very important um, because otherwise that's, that's how you're going to connect up with somebody. Obviously, you have investors. That you right. I don't know that you've been uh, announced that yet, but we can talk about it. Though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell tell me about that, and tell me what the investors are thinking is going to be the business model here, because obviously they want to know that you're going to make some money someday. Right. There's a couple different possibilities. Um, naturally, there's a lot of data. You know, there's data about why people are meeting, where they're meeting, things like that. That's that's valuable data. Um, there's um, if the app is, you know, as with any app, if it's, you know, addictive enough, there's certainly, you know, freemium features that are a possibility that give users more valuable. I'd love to go to the LinkedIn example. It's a perfectly useful app if you don't pay for it. But there's a strong, you know, percentage of power users that have no problem paying, you know, X dollars a month for the features that they get being a power user. Um, and there's a lot of other possibilities in the space as well. You know, we, um, I, I think the great thing about it is it's so new that, Nobody really knows where it's going to go. We just know that it's very popular and solving a, a very immediate need that a lot of people have. And we, we do kind of want to explore how people are going to use it to figure out, and, and honestly, what people are comfortable with monetizing. You know, we're, um, our ethos is very much about giving people control over how they're represented, what they're, you know, what's done with their, their data and things like that. We do not ever want to cross that line. Um, yeah, you're going to know a, a lot of things about people before they might even know it about themselves. Right. Walking into a store is intent. My, when I ran a retail Absolutely. store, my boss used to say, everybody comes in here to buy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <You know? Yep. laughs> and now you're going to be able to track me as I walk around, and you're right. going to really know more about me than I might even realize about me. Right. Yep. Yeah. Um, and you know uh, Target is already watching this kind of behavior right. on your buying behavior. They, they knew... Uh, a girl was pregnant before her dad did, right? Mm -hmm. Because of the targeting that they're doing. Mm -hmm. And that gets to the freaky line again. We're, we're starting to go, oh, these things are a little freaky. They're a little uh, stalkerish. <laughs> they're gonna yeah. be studying us in yeah. a new way. You know? and, I, and I think it just goes back to the importance of making sure the user has has control of what's happening, you know, to their, um, not not just to, you know, how they're represented in a, in a location feed, in a, in a feed of, you know, who's nearby and so on, but, how their data is represented and things like that. And, I, and I, I fundamentally believe that you can make money without compromising that, um, that for, for a user. Um, there's, perfectly, there's many examples of companies that are doing a, a great job of this um, and you know, not compromising those, that, that privacy, so to speak. Tell me a little bit about what what you would see at South by Southwest if you loaded this uh, loaded Kismet up, and and what kinds of things would show up on your phone. Sure. So um, right off the bat, you're going to see a, a feed of people and events nearby. So you can see um, maybe this person that uh, maybe you know I'm walking around and I can see oh you're you know uh, half a mile away at the Mashable party. Um, I can also see the party itself and who's going, who's attending, and I can go into an event page, look at that um, you know, mark that I'm going to that event, and actually invite my, other, my friends to come with me. Do you see only people who have Kismet on their phones, or do you see other kinds of people as well? Yes, right now you only see people that are using Kismet. Um, we are exploring whether it makes sense to include you know, users that are, that are on other services as well. I think the main thing is you know, um, you know, installing an app like this expresses the intent that you want to meet new people, and that's pretty valuable. Um, but what you can do is checking in on Foursquare, um, and we're working on a couple other uh, services as well, will result in a check-in on Kismet. So again, it gives you another, uh, and, and vice versa as well. If I check in on Kismet, it will filter out if I so choose and actively say so that I want to, to check in on Foursquare and Facebook and um, expose my location on Twitter as well. Um, you know, it gives me another means of expressing where I am. Some people don't want to open up an app as another check-in, but they want to open an app when they're ready to meet somebody new. And this allows the user to do that. They can check in on Foursquare, shows up as a check-in on Kismet, they're still available in that feed of people nearby. Um, and then when they want to actively look for other people or events, then they can open Kismet as well. Yeah. Some of your competitors are showing maps of where we actually met. Do you guys show like a, a map of where we physically walked by each other? No, we, we don't show that. Um, we, it's an interesting idea. Um, but um, I think it, I, yeah. I think it's a little on the creep on the creep factor. At least for me, um, I don't want people I've never met to see my exact path throughout the day. I mean, um, 
That goes no, back to No, it doesn't the show that because it only shows when you just walk when you, within when you 50 yards. Yeah. Yeah. It, it only shows like if you walk within 50 yards of me. But, mm -hmm. but there is something creepy about maps. It, it, yeah. it, I, I've noticed that people have this reaction. Oh, right. it shows where I am? Oh, mm -hmm. That's sort of weird. Uh, so it, it's always playing with this creepy line, isn't yeah. it? You guys right. are really having to decide how far that over well, that creepy line you're going to go. And we want the user to decide. We, we want to give people the option of being on one end or the other, and we want the user to set where that line is for them. For, for you, it's going to be a lot you know, different of a place than it is for Michelle or somebody else. Yeah. And we want the user to have control over, over that. Um, and there are certain things, you know, the, the map, if, we can, if it's something we could do easily and you could turn off easily, yeah, it's, it's an interesting feature. We think it's, um, we, we spend our time you know, building something like the, the home geofence, which is when I go home, if I, maybe I want to show that where my house is. You probably, you yourself probably wouldn't have a problem with that. But some people are a lot more private about their homes and they want to, you know, they want to hide that. So they, and they don't want to have to think about stopping the app when they, when they get home. Yeah. Um, I, I like the map because it, it lets me see where the GPS hit was. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the apps like Glancy only says it's within walking distance or within a, a short distance. And, yeah. it, and it's like, well, I, I don't know where they are, and especially at South by Southwest. We're going to see so many people right. using these apps. Like, oh, he's on that corner. He's probably at the Mashable party. But I think you saw that through the the party interface, which right. is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, anything else I need to know about this? So, are you building an API? Are you thinking of hooking? Well, you're already thinking of hooking up to other services through yep. their APIs, but. Do you think this is going to turn into some sort of platform? Or? Certainly there's an opportunity to turn it into a platform. Um, again, it's so new, it's hard to say what, what that can look like. But um, there's a whole host of opportunities to, to make this you know, more of a, much more of a platform experience where people can, can you know, plug into our, our app or data we provide. Um, and also, we, we do want to add more services. Right now, we, we link in with um, Facebook and Foursquare and Twitter um, and so on. But we're adding Instagram down the line, certainly looking into food spotting as well. And um, basically, the more opportunities and ways we can give people to represent where they are and who they are, um, it's much more valuable in terms of you know meeting new people and, and introducing people to each other. Yeah. One last thing: what what does South by Southwest mean to companies like that? Why are they all coming out in one three week period? You know, well, <laughs> it's it's. I look at it as it's just. There's thousands of people that are excited about technology and excited about making technology better and excited about figuring out what's, what's the next big thing. And they're all on top of each other for yeah. the three week period in the same bars, in the same hotels, in the same restaurants. And it's where, it's where you, know, you get a lot of serendipity. You run into people that you meet all the time. It's where, it's where kismet you know, happens, you know, <laughs> the, the actual word you know, kismet. You know, it's where kismet happens. And, and it's an opportunity that we don't have you know, because the industry is, is no longer just in Silicon Valley you know, or San Francisco. It's, it's all over the place. Yeah. So bringing everybody together in one place just gives us an opportunity to kind of continue exploring innovation. We didn't cover that, by the way. Uh, is this iPhone only, or are you on other phones? We're iPhone only right now. Uh, Android version is coming in just a few weeks. Um, but uh, we certainly want to support uh, both, both platforms. Okay. And are you available only in the United States or worldwide? We're in the United States right now, um, and we'll be expanding to the rest of the world uh, at some point in the near future. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. Where do we learn about it, and where, where do we get the app? We're at getkismet.com, G-E-T-K-I-S-M-E-T.com, and we're in the iTunes App Store as well. Very cool. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you. for coming out and showing Thank to you. me. It's really awesome. Thanks for having us. It's going to be fun to play with. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Thanks a lot.